All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Derek Lawson, and I'm a senior PLM consultant here at Inflow Technology and Computer Aid Technology. And today we're gonna to be talking about reporting with SolidWorks PDM Professional and how to take the information that we have stored inside of our system, kind of export that out to the world. So as we move along today, we're gonna to be talking essentially about three, main about three main components. We are going to be talking about how we set up our reports and how we can run those, actually running the reports themselves, and then how we can view and export those report results. So to get us started, we're going to talk about setting these types of reports up. And essentially, when we look at something like that, there are really two main things that we need to set up beforehand. One are search cards. Search cards are essentially a custom interface um, that allows us to input search criteria. These search cards are completely customizable, so you can put in any information that you want to return back from. The second portion that we need to set up are result lists. These determine what that information that's being reported back looks like. What information do we actually want to include? Um, this could be used for bill of material returns or document searches as well. So depending on what we want to search off of, if we have one group that only needs to see things like part numbers, descriptions, revisions, um, you know, for instance, sales or something like that, we would have a result list that shows only that minimal information. If we have another group that needs to see much more information, such as costing or lead time or anything along those lines, we could have another result list set up just for that group. So we can display whatever information we need accordingly. So let's take a look at how we go in and set up search cards. I actually have a search card kind of pre-made and we're going to be adding a couple things inside there. So inside of our PDM Professional Vault, we have a card section where I have a card already set up inside here for parts reporting. This card has things like drop-down menus that allow me to choose a folder path. I can search for the variable file name or name. I could also search for the variable description that will report back any of those aspects that I'd like to see. Now again, whoops, these are completely customizable. Let me get inside there. So again, these are completely customizable. So as we continue to modify these parts, we can add really anything that we want inside here. So inside of this card, I'm gonna add a new text label. And this one is just going to be searching for a part number variable, along with an edit box that allows me to type whatever that number is that I'm searching for. Now we have a lot of different variables that we can search from. Some of these are search variables that are built into the system, such as the file name or built-in revision number. We also have our standard variables inside of PDM that we can use too. For instance, our number variable. When we have that determined, we could use some of our nice little cleaning tools to make sure that everything is nice and aligned and sized the way we expect it to be. So by going through and adding those few controls inside there, we can see um, how that information can be uh, showed up there. So I saw a chat pop up. Sounds like someone's having some audio issues. Um, Bob or anyone else on the line, are you experiencing any audio issues? Um, no, I'm not on my end. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any other issues. Um, the only suggestion I would make is if you're using PC audio, sometimes that will degrade over time, especially if you're, you're viewing what's on screen along with the PC audio, I'd recommend um, probably calling in instead of using the PC audio. Okay, good suggestion. Thank you, Bob. All right, so I'll continue to move forward. So we've set up some of our search cards, um, but there's actually a new feature inside of 2019. Uh, that feature, when we're using search cards, it actually allows us to pull whatever our current username is. So if I'm logged in as Derek Lawson, it can put Derek Lawson into one of those search fields. If I'm logged in as John Doe, it will put that username inside there. So this, this can be set for um, things like the checked out by user, the labels by user, the versioning, the workflow, and author as well. So to set that up, I'm actually gonna continue with this card and add another field here to allow me to search checked out by. So I can run a search and see who has what files checked out. So again, by adding another label and then adding an edit box, I can allow that or I can allow my search to run that application. 
So again, I could use some of those cleaning tools to make sure everything is nice and clean looking for me. And this time, I'm going to connect to one of those search variables. You can tell by that small magnifying glass. So once I have that section in there that allows me to search by the user, I can use our default values underneath the card menu. The default values allow this card to automatically populate with information. And in this case, I want my checked out by user to automatically populate with the logged in username. And I do that by adding user in parentheses, or I'm sorry, percent signs. Once I have that information there, I could save it, and then I'm good to go. And we're going to see how that works here in a little bit when we go through running these search processes and how that automatically populates. So once we have our search card set up, we want to set up the result lists as well to show how those are being displayed. So the result lists are essentially columns. So inside of PDM Professional, we can create a new column set and give it a name. Then we want to find that column set not for researching, uh, for showing different file lists as we browse, but this will actually be a search result list. And this list is defined by adding columns and giving those columns a variable to look at, and then a name that will show up inside the column set that we're looking at, and then alignment and width. Now inside of here, we again have standard variables that we can look at. We can also have all of our custom variables. And as you can see, as we add these variables that we're looking at that we would like to report back, we can see at the top it's actually giving us a preview of how that data set will look, that column set. So as we go in and add uh, some additional things like the revision, we can see that we can modify the name and the default width to make it a little bit more suitable. So once we have that set, we now have a nice column list that we want our search card to report back with. So if we go back into the card that we had set up, we can set that column set to that card. So now anytime we run a search with this card, that's the list that's going to be reported back to us. So those are really the main things that we need to have set up beforehand. Next is actually running those reports. So there's really three ways that we can do this. We can do this inside of the actual search add-in, which is a search inside of our local vault view. If we do have PDM Professional, we can also run it inside of a external search tool. It's a standalone tool that also allows us to search inside multiple vaults. We can also run these searches inside of a file open dialog box. This isn't really a report, but it is useful. So for instance, if you have Microsoft Word open and go to file open, you can utilize our search tool inside there. And we're going to see how something like that works here as well. So utilizing our PDM search add-in, inside of our local vault view. When we're in our vault view, at the top right, we have a nice little magnifying glass. I like to call this our search shade. This shows us any cards that we have created, along with some other information. So you can see this card gives me some default information, such as my checked out by user. I don't necessarily need that, but if I run that search for anything that has an SLD PRT in the file name, I'm going to see all the parts. If I change that to assembly, I'm going to see all of the assembly files inside of this project. And you notice that I don't need any wildcards or anything like that. This is all a contained search, although we can use those. So by running these searches, I can see a nice result directly inside of PDM. But I also have the ability to export that information out to a CSV or Excel file. And we're going to see how these work a little bit more in detail further down the line. But you can see based on the information that we set up in our result list, it's exporting that information into Excel too, which is really handy if we want to pass this information along to other users. So next in our discussion topic, in addition to running the search add-in, we can also create favorites for those searches. So if there's a search that we run over and over and over again, we can actually set that up as a favorite inside here. So if I'm running a new search, and you can see I'm actually using wildcards here, to show me every single file that has an SLD inside the file name. I could see all my files populate there. Now, if I close out of this search shade and reopen it, all that information is still there, which is great. But if I refresh it, it all goes back to that default information, which can be pretty annoying if you have a lot of searches that you're running. So if you have a search setup that you use over and over and over again, such as any SOLIDWORKS files that are checked out by the system administrator, we can click on that little star icon and choose to add this search to our favorites. So by choosing to add it to our favorites, we can give it a new name. In this case, we'll call it 
the admins checked out files. We can assign other users and groups the permission to see or modify that favorite as well. So now at any point while we're inside of PDM, if we click that small black arrow, we can not only see our cards, but also any favorites that we've created. And by selecting that, it will automatically run that search and allow us to see those files. So it's a really handy tool when working inside of PDM, so you can see all the files that you're currently working on. Next, we have our PDM search tool, which works pretty much the same as our add-in. It's just outlined um, a little bit differently, and it is a standalone tool. So this could be accessed by, again, clicking that small black arrow and opening up our search tool. And that will open in a separate window that allows us to see all of our search cards that we have created, along with all of our search favorites. So you can see those at the top there, depending on which vault we have expanded. And the cool thing about this is we could actually search inside of multiple vaults. So if we have multiple vault views set up on our machine, um, we could select a specific search, check both of those boxes, and then run that search for all of the vaults combined. Um, I know that's not checked at the bottom, but that is the process that we would run through to do that. So we can actually see all of the files regardless of what vault we're in. And then just like before, we can export that information out to a CSV or Excel document to send off to another user if that's what we would like to do. And lastly, I want to show the benefit of using the file open dialog box inside of an application to run these searches also. So if I'm inside of SolidWorks and I want to open up some specific files, but I'm not sure what those files are called, Anytime I browse to the vault, I have this search option now available inside of my file open dialog box. So if I don't know what file it is that I'm looking for exactly, I can utilize my PDM searches to find that type of information. So if I was inside of Microsoft Word, I could look for any DOC files. Since I'm in SolidWorks, I can look for any SolidWorks files and then directly open them up from that file open dialog box and see them open inside of our native application there. So again, it's not necessarily a report per se, but it is a very useful tool that is built off the same reporting features that we're using currently. So those are some really good ways to, to run some of the basic searches, but we also have some advanced searches inside of here as well. So with the card that we had set up, it was a very basic project card but we also have a complete search card inside of here as well. Now this is something that typically comes by default, but allows us to look in the folders, look by descriptions, look for old versions. We can also use any data card that we've created in the past, such as our SOLIDWORKS part or assembly cards, and use those as our search cards as well, which could really save some time. We can search by things such as who has specific files checked out, or if we want to see any files that are currently checked out. We can look at version, workflow, label, history, content data, all that fun stuff inside of this uh, search card too. And again, this is all fully customizable. But one of our big benefits is the ability to search off of variables. So if I'm looking for the variable description and I wanna say that inside of that description, the text contains ARM, I see one file pop up, but I notice that I'm not getting any files that are checked out. By checking that setting, I can see I now have two files, one that's checked out, one that is not. And both of these files both contain, inside of its description, the term ARM. Because inside my variable, I wanted it to contain the term ARM. Now, the benefit of this is I can add multiple conditions to the same variable. So along with the description, I want to make sure that the text does not contain the left ARM. I only want to find right. So by adding those conditions to the variables, I can really narrow down my search and find the right files that I'm looking for. And I think I saw a question pop up um, asking what version allows the export. And I'm pretty sure that PDM standard can also export to a CSV file when using the PDM add-in type search. So it should be available for both. Okay, and the next portion of reporting is actually viewing and exporting all of these reports here. So with viewing and exporting, we have a couple different things that we'll take a look at. One is viewing the different results. So we can actually change how these results are being displayed. We saw before that we had set up a column 
view list. Um, but we're going to see how we can utilize some additional tools to change how things are being displayed to us. Also, we'll see how those changes are affected when we export those files as a CSV or Excel file. So first, we'll take a look at viewing our results. So inside of our search window, whether it be uh, the add-in or the standalone, we can run a, a standard search inside of here looking for whatever files we see fit. So in this case, we'll look for a SOLIDWORKS assembly. When we see those assembly files, and again, this is every assembly file inside of the vault, we can, of course, export that report to a CSV file. So there's all of the assembly files that are located inside this vault with the information that we set up on that column set list that we set up just a little bit ago. However, if we want to look at specific information of the file, such as the bill of material information, we could see that using the bill of materials or contains tab. And inside of these tabs, we can change the revision that we're actually looking at. So if there were major changes in revision B where parts were added or removed, we could see that information here. Same with the configurations or whether we want to see the top level or all levels of this bill of material. And of course, depending on those sections or selections that we make, when we choose to export that information, that is how it's going to show up inside of our Excel document. So we could actually print out an old version of a SOLIDWORKS assembly bill of material and save that as Excel for someone to review. Now, it also works in the opposite direction. If we're looking for SOLIDWORKS parts, well, part files don't really contain information inside there. They can, but typically they don't. So if we're looking at the contains of a part, we're not going to see much. However, we can see where that file is used. So I can see that the leg or the head is actually used inside of that LEGO Man assembly. I can also go back and look at old versions of those files, specific configurations, whether I want to see the top level or all versions that's ever been attached to. So I can see that LEGO head has been attached to many versions of the LEGO Man assembly. And again, based on those selections that we make, when we choose to export those files as a CSV, that information is going to show up properly there as well. So you can see I have all levels shown that show that the part goes into the assembly that then goes into the drawing. So viewing and exporting those are very, very versatile. Um, a lot of users like the ability to export as a CSV because obviously it's going to save a lot of time and make sure that everything is accurate. So in addition to all of our searches, we actually have some bonus content that's available inside of PDM Professional. Now, this isn't something new that's too uh, new to 2019, but something that's been around for a good little while, but not a lot of people are aware of it. So in addition to searching, we can use a feature called a PDM Professional Report Generator. Now, what exactly is this? This is a generator that will allow us to utilize the Microsoft SQL database in the background to run queries and then report those back to us. And this can be found by going into our Tools drop-down menu and running one of those queries. So how do I actually get this set up and what do I need? Well, first, you need to have SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional. This is not available inside of PDM Standard. We also need to have some working knowledge of the SQL language to actually create the query. We then have to save that query as a report file with the extension of .crp. And then the users, of course, have to have permission to run those reports. Now, to get started, there's also some really good examples, typically inside of your installation location. Um, under the SOLIDWORKS PDM Report Examples 1, that actually imports a couple different reports inside of the report generator. There's also a lot of really good information on the SOLIDWORKS knowledge base. But let's take a look real quick and see how that is actually set up and performed. So inside of my system, I actually have a bunch of searches that I've either created or pulled from the examples or the knowledge base. Um, so you can see that we have these CRP file types. And if we open that in Notepad, which is a really good way to edit these, we'll notice that it does take some specific formatting to get these set up. And you can actually find a format template on our Inflow blog. But essentially what we need inside here is the SQL code that will run inside of the database and pull the appropriate information back. Now, once we have that set up as a CRP file, inside of our PDM Vault view, we can go down to our report generator underneath the Tools drop-down menu. You can see I have a couple inside there already, but I actually want to pull a new one in. 
So if I go to my location where I have those files saved, I can pull in any one of those CRPs. So this is a report that will go through and list files that aren't being referenced. And of course, I have to give the users and groups permissions to run that search. Once that's done, it adds that search query, which I can then check inside of my report generator and run that. Now, some of these have variables that we can set up where we can type in the type of file that we're looking for. And you can see I have no results here. So I'm going to run another one that we had set up just on our own, such as the days that a file has been in a specific state. So we can see that these files have been in a specific state for X amount of days. We can also set up things like report auditors or revision auditors to make sure that what the PDM revision says matches what's on those data cards. So we can see with reports like this, they can actually dig in well beyond the standard searching mechanism that PDM has to offer and pull out any of that information directly from the database, which really kind of expands our horizons on what kind of information that we could pull back. And again, because this is a SQL query, we don't have to have it show up just inside of the report generator. We can have it save out as an Excel file if we'd like to as well using standard SQL coding. So I know that was a lot of information to kind of fit into this half hour time frame, but I want to make sure that you had a good idea of what it took to set some of these searches and custom reporting mechanisms up, how we can run them, and then how we can view and utilize those results once we receive them. So with that being said, does anyone have any questions based on what we've seen today, whether it be setting up the search cards, um, the result list, those column lists, running the reports or exporting, or anything with that report generator that we got to see at the tail end there. So any questions? And I'll actually take a look at my chat as well, to see if there's anything else that I missed there. And then Bob, I'm not sure if everyone is still on mute or if they can unmute themselves. They can unmute themselves if they, if they so choose. Um, I usually don't do a full unmute. Um, we do have one that popped in the chat here. Is there a scheduler that can run the reports automatically? So typically there's not any kind of scheduler inside of PDM that can do that. Um, the best way... We do have one that popped in the chat here. Is there a scheduler that can run the reports automatically? So typically there's not any kind of scheduler inside of PDM that can do that. Um, the best way that I would recommend doing something like that is similar to those report generators that we had set up. Um, we could typically run some type of scheduled task or maintenance plan inside of SQL directly that would then run that SQL query, uh, query and, and export that out to some type of Excel or CSV or XML file. So there's nothing really inside of PDM out of the box, but it could be done through the Microsoft SQL database. Any other questions? Um, it says, can you schedule PDM tasks to run these reports? Uh, do, 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 schedule PDM tasks to run these reports. So you're talking about the actual tasks inside of PDM Professional, I'm assuming. Um, there's nothing that I can think of. The best way that I could think of something like that happening is, again, if we set up a custom task to run a batch file or something like that, that would then, again, reach into the SQL database and run a report or run a SQL query that would then export a file. So I don't think there's any connection between the searches and the report generator to run on any type of trigger out of the box inside of PDM. So another question popped over. Um, is there a email button to share the report? Ooh, that's that's a really good idea. There, unfortunately, there is not. But that is going to be a great enhancement request. Um, so the best substitute that I would think at this point is if the user is inside of PDM. Obviously, we could give them permissions to go through and run those reports or run those search favorites or search cards. So they can, of course, run that at any point in time at their discretion. Um, otherwise, it would probably be best to um, export that file as a CSV and then just attach that to an email as a uh, as an attachment. 
But that is a, that is a very good question. I'm not actually going to make a note of that. Submit that one to SolidWorks. And I'm going to do the same. <laughs> So I'd like to thank everybody for spending time with us today. Um, I know sometimes it's just kind of hard to carve out 25, 30 minutes of your day. So we really appreciate you coming, getting some knowledge from us. Um, get in, get out, and get back to work. So um, I'd just like to say thank you. Thank you, Derek. Great presentation as always. Never, never, never have not learned something from you. I always learn something, which is great. So thank you very much. So feel free to send us an email with any questions, and we'll filter those to the people that can get you an answer very fast. So thank you, and have a great day.